Hey guys, Joe back at it once again with some A-level further maths topics and today we are talking about linear interpolation. So, this is part two of the numerical methods um, in FP1 and yeah, it's it's not too bad this one, I like this, but there's a couple of different ways of doing it. I know the year below me were taught differently to the way I was taught it. I prefer this method and that's the way I'm going to hopefully teach you. Uh, so the learning objective today is to understand how to show that there's a presence of a root between two values using the method of linear interpolation. So we know how to show that a root lies between a certain interval, uh, but as you may have already guessed, there are more ways to approximate root than just interval bisection. Another method is a process known as linear interpolation, and that's certainly not to be confused with interpolation used in statistics. Um, I will talk about statistics later on, uh, maybe not stats 1, but possibly stats 2. Uh, this is where we pretend that the curve acts as a straight line between the extreme points of the interval, thus creating similar triangles. We then use the idea of scale factors for these triangles and can therefore find an approximation of the root. So, show that there's a root uh, to x cubed equals it should be minus, I think, that. It should be minus. Or it could be plus, I don't know. Because I'm looking at my keyboard right now, seeing what, what's next to equals, and I think it should be plus. But x cubed plus 1 over x minus 2 over x squared in the interval minus 2, uh, minus 1, using linear interpolation to find an approximation of this root. Uh, it's actually meant to be minus, according to that. So I was right the first time. You see, Joe, you shouldn't go against your instincts because you'll just confuse people. Um, probably more. Oops, probably more than you already do. So there you go. Sorry about that, guys. That's meant to be a minus. So there you go. Uh, that's a function. Oops. <laughs> I'm just making a bit of a mess of this video. Uh, maybe if I was more professional, I would start this again. But here we go. Uh, putting a minus 2 through, you get minus 2 cubed minus 1 over minus 2 plus 2 over minus 2 squared, which equals minus a plus a half plus a half, which is minus 7. If you pull minus 1 through, you get that, which is 2. And remember, uh, to show that there's a root, we're looking for a change of sign. With scene 1, change of sign implies that there's a root between the interval minus 2 and minus 1. So, linear interpolation, um, minus 7 and 2 will be the triangle dimensions, and that will become a little bit more clear here. So, we've now got this, draw yourself a little number line from minus 2 to minus 1, because that's where interval. Uh, minus 2 went all the way down to minus 7, and minus 1 went up to 2. So, there you go. And for this part of the graph, we just pretend that it behaves as a straight line, so you just join them up like that. And there we go, we create two similar triangles. A yellow triangle and a blue triangle. So, work out the scale factor between them by uh, dividing 7 by 2. So, the scale factor, um, well, the bases are in a 7 over 2 to 1 ratio. Like that. Because if we call that A, and with we'll scale factor is 7 over 2, then that's going to be 7 over 2a, or 3.5a, whatever you like. So therefore, if we look at the length of this line, the red line I've just drawn in, the whole of that line must be equal to 9 over 2. Oh, I keep drawing little lines by accident. And that must be equal to 1, because the distance between minus 2 and minus 1 is simply 1. Therefore, a equals 2 ninths. So what you can do here is you can put in your a and do minus 2, add uh, 7 over 2 times 2 over 9. Uh, or you can do minus 1, minus 2 over 9. It really doesn't matter. It's all to do with this a, though. Now you've worked it out, you can either go minus 2 plus that lot of a, or you can do minus 1, minus just a single a. I've done minus 1, minus 2 over 9, uh, but I've said that you can do minus 2 plus 7 ninths and that equal both of them equal minus 11 ninths so that is the next approximate root here's another one then show that there is a root 2 x cubed oh, I've, I've 
that I'm sure that's probably meant to be a plus. We'll have a look in a second, but uh, we'll have to show that in the interval three to four. Use linear interpolation to find an approximation to this root. First, we must work in radians uh, because numerical methods do not work with degrees, and you'll find that at a higher level, you're using radians a lot more because degrees just fall apart uh, at a certain level of maths. So, um, well, maybe it is x cubed times sin x. Perhaps it is. It must be. So, putting a 3 through, you get uh, 3 cubed times sin 3 minus 2, which is 1.81. And when you put 4 through, you get 4 cubed sin 4 minus 2, which equals minus 50.44. So, quite a difference there. But what we were looking for was a change of sign, and we've got that. And that implies that there's a root in the interval of 3 to 4. So we now use the 1.81 and the minus 50.44 as our triangle dimensions. So there you go, we now have this, with a little number line, 3 and 4. That 3 went up to 1.81 and 4 went all the way down to minus 50.44. So there we go. And remember we pretend for this part of the graph that it behaves like a straight line. So we join them up like that and thus create similar triangles. A green triangle and a pink triangle. And now we can use scale factor uh, ideas. So we can divide the 50.44 by 1.81, which is about 27.87, but I would personally just keep it as 50.44 over 1.81, more accurate. So uh, the bases are in a 27.87 to one ratio. So you've got 27.87A and A. So if we add them together, we should get 1, because the difference between 3 and 4 is 1. So, for example, if this was a 5, you would say that's equal to 2, uh, just to make that clear. It's not always equal to 1. So therefore, A is 1 over 28.87. Sorry about that, guys. The recording just cut out. So, uh, as I was saying, A equals 1.28.87, and you can either go... Uh, that amount on from 3 or you can take off 27.87 lots of that from 4. I would personally go with 3 plus A. So you get that. And both cases, whichever method you chose, you would get 3.035 and that is the next approximate root. And that is that. So, uh, linear interpolation, it's quite a nice one. I, I quite like it. It's a little bit fiddly to get used to but do a few examples and the triangle method is uh, the one I like the most. Uh, so hopefully you guys have found this lesson helpful. Make sure you leave a like if you did because I need to know that these lessons are of a good quality. I know uh, I haven't been the most professional this episode um, so sorry about that but uh, yeah I'm not a qualified teacher so don't expect um, you know 100% quality lessons but yeah, uh, leave any comments down below in the comment section, obviously, and I'll try and answer as many questions as possible uh, to the best of my ability. And I'll see you guys in a couple of days for the final FP1 lesson, which will be on the Newton-Raphson method, which we'll talk about in a couple of days. So I'll see you then.